Hey guys, Dino here. Um, today I'm going to show you a spare, spare of the moment brew that I thought I'd uh, put together. Um, I am planning on doing an all grain uh, over the next few weeks, but um, yeah, I'm just um, I just have the overwhelming urge to brew a beer. So I have some ingredients left over in the cupboard, some grains, uh, some hops, and yeast in the fridge. So I. Uh, put my thinking cap on, look for a few books. So I've decided what I'll do is I will do a Cascade Hopped um, IPA. So I had all the ingredients, um, the only thing I didn't have was the base um, and because I don't have a lot of time at the moment I thought I would use a, a kit as the base. So I'm going to use the Cooper's Lager um, kit and add some other uh, specialty grains and hops etc. So yep, I'll show you what I've got now. Um, the only thing I went out and bought was this uh, Cooper's Lager Kit and uh, the reason I uh, got that is I wanted something that was like a as close to a uh, pale malt sort of base as I could get in a, in a kit form and also I chose one that was quite uh, lowly bittered as well because what I'm planning to do is I'm going to use the whole can in a nine and a half litre batch so uh, it's just something you've got to be careful with if you're doing like a two can recipe or you're um, short brewing um, a kit uh, based recipe i.e. you're just reducing the volume that you're, um, you've got in your batch you've got to be aware that you're going to dramatically increase the bitterness rating so anyway this, this one um, is a 390 IBU um, kit so that's what it's saying is for this tin here alone it's 390 IBUs Obviously, by the time you divide that um, down into whatever vo uh, size batch you're doing, like a 23 litre volume, or in my case, a 9.5 litre volume, you're going to um, reduce that bitterness rating. But um, because I'm doing 9.5 litres, uh, that's going to work out at um, about 70 IBUs. Um, and then also to that, I will add in some. Uh, medium crystal, I'm going to add 150 grams of that. Got a tiny, about 90 to 100 grams of carapils left over. I'm going to add that just for some uh, help with the head retention. And I also had um, some this redback malt left over, um, which is meant to impart a red colour to the beer. So I'm actually going to put that in. It's not a huge amount, but it, it might give the, the IPA a nice sort of ready tinge. And then finally, because uh, the the kit's obviously pre-bittered. I'm not going to do any um, bittering hops, um, but I've got 70 grams of Cascade, so I might split that into a, a smallish amount for like a hop tea, and then I'm going to dry hop with the rest, so I really want that Cascade to come through, and then I'm going to use the USO5 ale yeast instead of the kit yeast. So yeah, that's it there, that's the ingredients. Um, we will come back once I've got things underway. Cheers. Okay, so I decided in the end to go with 20 grams of the Cascade for the hop tea. So I've just got that sitting in some boiling water, uh, 500 mils. I'm going to leave it in there for 10 minutes. I don't want to impart too much bitterness into the beer. It's already bitter enough in the kit. So um, yeah, 10 minutes I'll leave it in there, 20 grams. And then over here I've just about finished steeping all my grains, the carapils, the crystal malt and the redback. So that's in 2 litres of uh, 75 degree Celsius water, so it's been in there for 30 minutes. So yeah, so once this is ready I will start putting everything together in the fermenter. Okay, so what I've done here is I mix the, uh, the lager kit can. I um, tip that in with um, some cold water and I've uh, topped that up quite high and then what I've done is I have emptied the contents of the grains with the liquid, um, just put them through a grain bag just to act as a filter, stop all the grain particles going through and then all the liquid can go through and um, I've just rinsed those grains with a little bit of um, hot water as well just to make sure all the goodness gets comes out. So that's that done and now all I have to do is just put the hop tea in, so we'll do that next. Okay, I've just uh, emptied the contents of the 20 grams of uh, Cascade hop tea. 
uh, into the fermenter. So once again, I've just um, I tipped out the grains and then just uh, used the same grain bag to um, plonk the liquid and hops in. As you can see, the grain bag's done a great job of uh, holding back all the hop matter. So it's just, just the liquid that's coming through into the fermenter. So yep, so we're pretty much all done now. I'll give that a good mix and then I can uh, pitch the yeast. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've topped, um, I've given the wort a good aerate with a whisk and a spoon and I've, it's been topped up to the nine and a half litres. And I've pitched, uh, I had two uh, sort of half packets of USO5, so I've put those in. So yeah, that's it. We'll pop the lid on and then we'll let that ferment for two weeks. But um, like I mentioned earlier, um, I'll dry hop with, um, I had 70 grams of Cascade, I used 20 already, so I'll, I'll dry hop with the remaining 50 um, in the last five days. Yeah, so that's a, uh, another brew day over. Um, pretty simple one with the old kits. Um, the last thing I need to do is um, just take a hydrometer reading. So I've checked it, it's um, sitting on 1064. But just wanted to show you the sort of a very interesting and nice looking sort of ready orange colour. So yeah, that I think that red back malt and also the uh, crystal malt has um, yeah, just added a little bit of a touch of colour to the to the beer. I don't want to be too pale with the lager base, so let's have a bit of a taste. Yeah, you can smell. As you guys know, you get the get the malt smell off there. Oh, that's very nice not overly bitter which is good which I was hoping for tiny picking up a tiny bit of the cascade but that's that's fine um, when I dry hop it that'll come through more so yeah there, there we go um, I decided because uh, it's got a touch of red to it I might call the beer my uh, Cooper's um, Cascade Red IPA. So the, yeah, we'll ferment, ferment that for a couple of weeks, and then uh, probably another couple of weeks after that, I'll be able to do a taste test. So yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.